Hey guys, I must admit that I'm very impressed by the speed of innovation in AI when it comes to accounting and finance. That's why in today's video, I wanted to put Google Bard to the test in analyzing a balance sheet. So I'm gonna compare Google Bard's ability to analyze the balance sheet to my own ability with 18 years of experience working in accounting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a balance sheet to analyze, and then I'm gonna do my own analysis, and then I'm gonna score its analysis, and I'm gonna give it a grade between F and A plus, and then we'll see who wins in this competition. And trust me when I say that you're gonna wanna stick around because not only I'm gonna be doing this scoring, but also I'm gonna give you my insight into what I see happening in accounting industry in the next 10 years, how the role of the accountant is going to evolve in the organization and transform from a back office into more of an operation role in the company. So let's dive right into today's video. If you are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Bill Hanna. I'm the financial controller. I'm a licensed CPA in New York and work as a controller at a software company in New York City. Uh, I share my knowledge here in the YouTube channel, The Financial Controller, beside my website, The Controller Academy, where I share with you my knowledge over the last 18 years and help you win and crush it as an accountant. So in today's video, we're taking a balance sheet for a manufacturing company, Buy It Now Inc., the balance sheet as of December 31st, 2022. And we're gonna put that into Google Bard and ask it to analyze it. And then we're gonna score that against my own knowledge, my own analysis of the same balance sheet. So we'll open up Google Bard and anyone with a Gmail can create a Google Bard account. Um, and you can just go in here and ask the question that you want. So I'm gonna say, can you analyze a balance sheet? And it's thinking, all right, it's good. So yes, I can analyze a balance sheet. I can help you understand the different components of the balance sheet various financial Great. So this is reassuring. It's telling me that it can. That's great. Now let's put the uh, ability to analyze to the test. We're going to paste the balance sheet into Google Bar. Then I'm going to show you how. So I'm going to go into our balance sheet, literally just copy and paste the information. So copy Google Bar and I'm going to just paste it essentially here. All right, great. Now, okay, so let's take a look at the analysis that Google Bard came up with. It looks like it came up with three versions. So if you see here, it says view other drafts. It came up with a draft one, two, and three. So let's take a look at each one. Um, and the first one, it looked like it did a couple of, or a few calculations for liquidity, solvency, and efficiency, which is really good. Uh, let's take a look at what it came up with. Sure, here is an analysis of Buy It Now, Inc.'s balance sheet as of December 31st, 2022 liquidity. Buy it now, Inc. has a strong current ratio of 1.84, which means that it has enough current assets to cover its current liabilities 1.84 times over. This indicates that the company is in a good position to meet its short-term obligations. The company also has a quick ratio of 1.63, which is also considered to be strong. This means that the company has enough cash and other quickly liquid assets to cover its current liabilities. Okay, I'm gonna pause it right here. Let's go ahead and calculate some of this stuff. So I don't wanna take it at its face value. I'm gonna go ahead and calculate. So let's take a look. It's saying that it did a liquidity ratio analysis. It came up with current ratio of 1.84 and also did a quick ratio and it came up with 1.63, right? Let's take a look at our sheet and recalculate these numbers to make sure that it's doing the right thing. So if we go to our sheet and I prepared here all the ratios that it did. So current ratio, quick ratio, and then solvency and efficiency. Um, we'll do our own calculations and then we'll score barred. Um, we'll give it a grade from one to 100 so we can then at the end score it and give it something between F and A+. And this file here is an Excel file that I'm gonna attach down below to, to this video so you can go ahead and download it and maybe play with it and test your own knowledge in calculating these ratios. Okay, so for current ratio, right? The current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities. So our calculation is gonna be equal, taking total current assets, dividing it by current liabilities, and we come up with 184. Perfect. So Bard did that. Uh, not only came up with the ratio of 0.84, but it uh, told us what it means. It means that um, the company has enough assets to cover its current liabilities 1.8 times over, um, which is actually correct. So I'm going to give it a score of 100 here because it did the right thing. Um, I put here something on the ratio guidance to guide you. Um, you know, anything above one is okay. Higher multiples are better. So this is just a guide for you to know what is a better current uh, ratio. Okay, great. Uh, quick ratio. It, Google Bard came up with 1.63. 
our calculation is for quick ratio is going to be current assets minus inventory divided by current liabilities um so it's a quick ratio because now we're taking the liquid assets we're saying inventory maybe isn't as liquid as cash and other short-term investments and an ar so we're going to exclude inventory from the calculation so that's equal to current assets minus inventory divided by current liabilities 1.58 Google Bard came up with 1.63. It's pretty close. Um, so I'm going to give that here a 95. All right. Again, with quick ratio is similar. Anything above one is a higher multiple. So you can many times over cover your current liabilities. Okay, great. Let's move over uh, to the next section here that Google Bard came up with. Uh, it did a calculation on solvency. So it said that uh, debt to equity ratio is 1.25, um, which is considered to be a moderate level of debt. Debt to equity ratio divides uh, liabilities divided by equity, um, and it just tells you uh, how the financing of the company is made up. Is it more liabilities or debt, or is it more equity from within the company from its own profits and investments from the owner? Okay, so it came up with 1.25, and then it did the company's interest coverage ratio is four. Uh, interest coverage ratio is uh, taking the company's net income, which I don't know how Google Bard is doing here. I think maybe my theory is that Google Bard is taking the balance sheet and making an estimate of the company's income using its equity and accounts receivable. This is my guess. But for this calculation, you would need to know net income for the company, which I haven't provided Bard in this case. But it made some guesses and it said that it's 4% uh, interest coverage, uh, not 4%, 4x, which means that the company makes four times the amount of interest that it has to pay, which is a good thing. So let's go ahead and calculate and see if that's correct. So it told us that the debt to equity ratio is 1.25. Uh, debt to equity ratio is total liabilities divided by equity. So it takes total liabilities and divides it by shareholders equity, 2.44. Now, Bard came up with 1.25. My guess is that Bard, instead of taking total liabilities, it took long-term debt. So let me see, equals long-term debt divided by equity, 1.25. That's what I guessed. So um, I've seen this calculated in two different ways with debt to equity ratio. I've seen it by taking the long-term debt and dividing it by equity, which really just measuring the amount of debt that the company is taking as financing. But also, and most of the time, I've seen it as a total liability divided by, by equity. The reason why it's total liabilities and not long-term debt is because current liabilities are also a form of financing in the business. So you got to consider that in a calculation. So in this sense here, I'm going to give Bard maybe an 80 because it's not entirely wrong. Um, I see where it's going with this, but the more better calculation or correct calculation is total liabilities divided by equity. So equals total liabilities divided by equity. 2.44, which is what we have in the guidance here. We need to be below one. 2.4 times, uh, we have 2.4 times uh, liabilities more than equity in the company, which means that we are more leveraged into debt, uh, which is a good thing if the interest is low and the amount of income that you're going to generate from financing by pay paying this interest, the amount of income is higher than the amount of interest that you're going to pay, then it's good. Otherwise, it's not so good to be leveraged. Okay, uh, now for interest coverage ratio, um, this is how many times over, um, uh, how many times can the interest payment be covered from earnings? Now, like I said, Google Bard, I think is making an assumption here and um, coming up with the EBIT or earning before interest and tax because I haven't given it that information. Um, my guess is that's making an assumption based on accounts receivable and equity and coming up with what will be the earnings and then making an assumption on the interest expense by looking at long-term debt that is $2 million and coming up with this number. So let's calculate it ourselves and see. Uh, I mean, Google Bard is saying that uh, the company interest coverage ratio is four, but let's calculate that ourselves. Uh, but before we go ahead and do that, if this video is providing you with good value and understanding, please go ahead and hit that like button because that's how my channel gets uh, spread and this video reaches more people, so you'll be helping me out. Okay, so for calculating the interest coverage ratio, we have the income statement tab here, so I'm gonna say equal, open parenthesis, because I'm gonna take the net income, right? And I'm going to add back a couple of things. I'm gonna add back interest, and I'm gonna add back taxes. This is the uh, earning before um, interest and tax. I'm gonna take that, right? And then divide that by the amount of interest that the company has to pay. And that gives me a multiple of five. Five. So the company makes five times in net income 
the amount of interest it has, it has to pay to service the loan, which is decent. So Google Bard is coming up with four, I came up with five. I'm actually pretty impressed by its ability to do, do that. So I'm gonna give it 90. All right, uh, now we move over to efficiency. So for efficiency, Google Bard did uh, a couple of ratios, the inventory turnover ratio, and it did accounts receivable turnover ratio, which is pretty good uh, way to check the health of the efficiency of the business. Okay, so let's go ahead. I mean, it, it came up with inventory, uh, inventory turnover of two, and it came up with a ratio for um, accounts receivable turnover of five. So let's take a look and see what it did. So for inventory turnover ratio, uh, the formula is cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. Now, again, I think AI is pretty clever because in this case here, I didn't tell it what cost of goods sold is because I haven't given it the income statement. I only give it the balance sheet. So let's go ahead and calculate it. We have the income statement and see if it made good guesses here. So cost of goods sold equals from the income statement, cost of goods sold divided by now, average inventory is gonna be inventory at the end of the period plus inventory at the beginning of the period divided by two. Again, Google Bard didn't have that information because they only gave a balance sheet for one month, but it was able to guess, I'm thinking in this case. Um, so I'm gonna take the prior month balance sheet inventory, add it to the current month inventory levels, right? Because the ending, ending of last month is the beginning of this month, right? And I'm gonna divide that by two to get the average inventory, right? And then let's see what we get in this case. So we get 2.7 almost, 2.7 as opposed to Bard coming up with two. Okay, I mean, it's pretty good. It, it's guessing um, in terms of cost of goods sold. I, I think it's pretty decent. I'm gonna give it a 90 in this case because it's came up pretty close. All right, uh, the next one that it did is accounts receivable turnover or accounts receivable turnover ratio. So the calculation for that is net credit sales divided by average AR. And again here, Bard doesn't know what, what sales are. It doesn't know what average AR is. It's just making guesses, right? So let's see if its guess came up close to reality. So net credit sales, in our, say, in our case here, when we look at the income statement, uh, sales are $2 million for this month, right? So $2 million in sales. All of our sales here are credit sales. Uh, because the the opposite is cash sales, right? If you are retail, maybe collecting cash on the spot. Uh, but in a manufacturing company, most of the time, the sales are going to be credit sales. So all of the sales are credit sales. So we take that. So we're going to say equals, right? Net credit sales. So from the income statement, 2 million divided by. Now for the average AR, we're going to take prior month AR plus current month AR and divide that by 2 and see what we get in this case. Uh, multiple of one. Uh, I think Google Bard came up with five. So I think, you know, it's able to make some guesses, but, you know, obviously these guesses could be right or wrong. So in this case here, the guess wasn't so good. Um, so it came up with a five, which is, five is actually pretty good accounts receivable turnover if you're able to turn your accounts receivable, your, your sales into cash that quickly. Uh, but um, one isn't so great. Uh, so this one, I'm gonna have to give it a lower score 60 maybe actually this one should be more in fact this one should be more of a failing score i'm gonna give it 40. all right so we got the scores here we can go ahead and calculate the average so we're gonna say equal average take these numbers get 82.5 82.5 uh, i have to check actually if that's i think that's a b plus let's take a look what is 82.5 what grade is 82.5 82.5 is a b all right so bard so great, Bard got a B. All right, great. So I, I gotta say I'm impressed uh, by this B. So this is my analysis, but if you are wanting me to do a video on something different and, and Bard or ChatGPT, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. That would be a good video idea for one of my next videos. But I am pretty impressed by well, what I can do. And so what I mentioned at the beginning of the video is I wanted to give you my insight into the role of the accountant of the future and how it's gonna be shifting based on this. Because historically, and even currently, the accountant is the person who is calculating these metrics. But now that these metrics can be calculated by a third entity such as AI, the role of the accountant is gonna to be to take this information and work with operations of the company, which is the inventory management, sales management, partner with these offices within the company into 
making the operations more efficient using this information here because the accountant has the insight and the knowledge of the numbers um, it's going to be a perfect business partner to make the company progress much faster right and so the role of the accountant is going to shift from a back office into the next 10 years from a back office which historically and currently is into a more of an operation role within the company similar to sales inventory management sourcing and these operation functions within the company also Bard came up with a couple of other um, drafts. So, uh, you know, we said the draft one, draft two, draft three. In draft two, what it did is highlighted the financial information. Um, it gives some specific observation from the balance sheet. Again, it talked about the same ratios. Nothing really extra here. Let's look at draft number three. The company is compared to the industry. So it says uh, the company has debt to equity ratio of 1.25, which is below the industry average of two. So this is one of the advantage, advantages that AI has over the limited human as me as an accountant is that it has access to the databases of all this information to compare this number and give you on the spot and says, listen, this is above or below industry average. So this is really good. All right. So like we said, this is an overall grade of a B. Uh, which is pretty impressive. So we're going to be uh, continuing to create these tests here um, going forward to see where AI, AI is going. The speed of innovation is fast. Um, I don't think a year ago this existed. So now we are in toward the end of 2023 and we're able to do this kind of stuff. I'm trying to imagine what 2024 is going to bring and the future uh, beyond that. And so that's why it's important that us as accountant uh, align ourselves with these technologies and be able to use it uh, because technology is not going to replace the accountant, but it's going to replace the accountant who doesn't know how to use the technology, right? So that's why you got to continue being sharp with learning these technologies. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.